Welcome to episode 260, Paul Tudor Jones, 14 Trading Rules. This is an outline of episode 260. Rule number one, be a cautious and happy trader. He learned this from losing 70% of his client's money in one single cotton trade early in his career. As soon as his trade was filled, he regretted it. Somebody told him he, he, he turned pale white <laughs> on the floor and said, if you need to go to the bathroom, just, just go right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, he just, yeah, he, he gauged the market wrong. It was, it was late in the day. There was nothing he could do about it. So he stepped off the floor, came back, and tried to sell. He, saw, he said he sold 150 contracts or something, and the market started dropping and closed the limit down. If, uh, these markets will have, the uh, cotton market wasn't allowed to fall more than 10 cents, say 12% in a day. So it, it fell that much, the market closed. And then on the open, it was down again that much instantly. The first trades of the day were down another, say, 10 cents. And uh, you know, he ended up losing 60 to 70% of his client's money in two days. And he, he vowed to, he said it was a, it was, it was a, you know, it was a wake up, it was a wake up call. He vowed to, to never let that happen again. Rule number two, don't grant interviews. Don't talk about trading secrets. PBS did a documentary trader on him in 1987. Jones tried very hard to buy it back, but it was too late. He had revealed too many of his trading secrets. He was 32 years old then. Rule number three, secret to successful trading. Thirst for knowledge. The secret to being successful from a trading perspective is to have an indefectible and an undying and unquenchable thirst for information and knowledge. Rule number four, intellectual capital trump financial capital. This is the philosophy behind his Robin Hood Foundation. What is special about the Robin Hood Foundation? Well, Jones was 33 when he founded Robin Hood Foundation. Most billionaires became charitable after they became old. Jones did it while he was young. Rule number five, spend 90% of your energy on risk control and you will be successful. Rule number six, loser, average loser. Don't ever average losers. Decrease your trading volume when, when you're trading poorly. Increase your volume when you are trading well. Never trade in situations you don't have control. Rule number seven, ego is your number one enemy. Every day I assume every position I have is wrong. Don't be a hero. Don't have an ego. Always question yourself and your ability. Don't ever feel you are very good. The second you do, you're dead. Rule number eight, he's a top and bottom turning pawn trader. I believe the very best money is made at the market turns. Everyone says you get killed trying to pick tops and bottoms and you can only make all your money by playing the trend in the middle. Well, for 12 years, I've made a lot of money at tops and bottoms. There is no training, classroom or otherwise, that can prepare for the trading the last third of a move, whether it's the end of a bull market or the end of a bear market. First one is really a statement of his trading style. And he makes the point there that, uh, you know, he's been making money consistently at you know, market turning points for years. And it is actually a fantastic way to trade and anyone can learn to trade and be a contrarian. Now, the huge advantage of trading turning points over trend following is... Rule number nine, do not try to find explanation for trade. The need to understand and rationalize why something should go up or down, usually by the time that becomes self-evident, the move is already over. These days, there are many more deep intellectuals in the business and that coupled with the explosion of information on the internet creates an illusion that there is an explanation for everything and that the primary task is simply to find that explanation. Rule number 10, that drives the global economy. This is where Paul Tudor Jones also believed in fundamentals. Fundamentals he also saw or monitors debt. You know, he has the view that, that debt cycles drive the global economy. Um, accumulation of debt 
relates to or is correlated to uh, a booming environment. Uh, and then when a debt peak has been reached of sorts and it comes time to pay down the debt, that's when uh, markets tend to consolidate and, uh, and bear markets enter. Uh, we saw a big accumulation of debt, um, you know, followed by the spike leads to now it's time to start paying off the debt, uh, which is going to lead to, or in the 20s, that led to the Great Depression in the 30s. Uh, he sort of draw that parallel in the in the 80s. You know, there was a big accumulation of, of debt during a lot of deficit spending in the 80s, uh, and that's what enabled them to see the crash in coming in 1987. Rule number 11, there are long-term economic cycles that repeat. Like this, what Sorry. gives these two confidence is a theory that says the stock market moves in cycles, in patterns. And Paul and Peter subscribe to the Elliott Wave theory, which says to them that what happened 49 years ago, in the late 1920s, is happening again, now. The future. Well, one of the last, the last great bull market really was the 1920s. And we looked back and did a statistical analysis on the 1920s through today, punching in literally thousands of Dow high low and closes to run correlations between what happened in 1925 to 1928 to what happened between 1982 and where we were in 1986. Well, that correlation turned out to be over 90 percent. In fact, since I've run that correlation, the correlation has gone up from about 90.7 percent to close to 92.2 percent. And as which you can one see, is, which one is the 20s? The 20s is the blue and the red is the 80s. So what day back in, in the 20s are we at right now, approximately? We're like in early August 1928. And so let's see if my memory serves me correctly. And we've got uh, another 40% of the day on the upside? Correct. So we're talking about... And about another year, a little over a year, up moving the Dow. And, and, um, and then, there, then, then it looks like there might be some storm clouds in the horizon. The, 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 the correlations here are phenomenal. That's incredible. That's, what were the chances of taking any two five-year period in the stock market and getting that kind of correlation? What would you guesstimate at the top of your head? Rule number 12, wait for low-risk, high-reward opportunities. And one only take, he only takes, or should I say, or I only take, I'm talking Paul Shooter Jones, takes high-risk reward plays. Okay. This is well worth listening to. I don't, this doesn't necessarily apply to everybody. There are traders out there who take uh, higher probability plays, but less risk reward. But this is something that perhaps you could take on board yourself. I look for opportunities with tremendously skewed risk reward opportunities. Don't ever let them get into your pocket. That means there's no reason to leverage substantially. There's no reason to take substantial amounts of financial risk ever, because you should always be able to find something where you can skew the reward risk relationship so greatly in your favor, you can take a variety of small investments with great reward risk opportunities that should give you minimum drawdown pain and a maximum upside opportunities. Rule number 13, trade with a mental stop. A mental stop here is not just the amount of money, but, the dura but also the duration period. How long are you going to hold the stock? Good defense is the key. Uh, you know, Paul Tudor Jones uh, says he keeps mental stops or he kept mental stops. Uh, when you're trading a large amount of money like, like he has been, uh, sometimes placing an actual stop lo loss order is a bit of a problematic and tip your hand. Uh, so he kept a mental stop loss order. Uh, again, he was very into the psychology. He accepted losing as part of the game. He didn't dwell on it, you know, shrugged it off, kept the losses small, accepted them, and, and moved on to his next opportunity. Rule number 14, as traders turn older, they tend to be more conservative. In the case of Paul Tudor Jones, he got married, he had four children, and naturally, consciously or subconsciously, he became more conservative. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your comments and questions below. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.